This is my first webinar. I hope to find it helpful and pleasant. You are more than welcome to send me by email any question you may have, your feedback, or even general comments at the end of the webinar. I'm glad to answer all of your questions and emphasize uh, more at your interesting parts in the next webinars. Okay, now let's go to the webinar. What we'll cover in this webinar? During this webinar, we'll first cover the objectives of market analysis. What is technical analysis and what is fundamental analysis? How fundamental news affects the market and how to trade using fundamental analysis through some examples. Before we go further, I want to make sure that everyone in this webinar understands the risk disclaimer. I'm sure you guys, you have already seen this several times. So what this tells you is that Forex trading is a risky endeavor and it does involve a significant amount of leverage, which can of course amplify your losses as your gains. So if you're not sure about anything, and certainly if you are new to this, please evaluate this very closely. Okay, so let's see how you start trading. Before you get in the market and start trading, of course you need to settle on some facts. Let's say that you have found the best broker company for you, you have downloaded the necessary trading platform, and now you are in front of your platform. You must decide which instrument you are going to trade. You can train a foreign exchange pair like Euro dollar, pound dollar, pound yen, a stock, an index, which can be FTSE 100, Dow Jones, Dermal Dax 30. You can even trade a commodity like gold, silver, or even oil. So anyone can understand what you will choose to trade is not a random choice. In this point is where the market analysis enters the game. Market analysis is the research you do to study the market and forecast the future direction of an instrument. It can be used to find trading opportunities in order to take profit. And of course, this is everyone's target, isn't it? <laughs> okay, market analysis is separated in two major categories, also known as the two schools, the fundamental analysis and the technical analysis, two completely different approaches to the market. As I said before, in this webinar, we explain both what is technical and what is fundamental analysis, but we'll emphasize more in the fundamental. This is because my colleague Shifko Yordanov covers the technical part in another series of JFD webinars. The first webinar for technical analysis was done last week, but if you're interested, you can find it on JFD YouTube channel. The most important thing before we explain what is each kind of analysis is to specify our objectives from the market analysis. Why do we need to analyze the market? Why, uh, what do we really want to find out through the market analysis, except of take, to take profit? Um, as I said before, you need to decide which financial instrument you will trade. You are in front of your platform and you have a lot of options of currency pairs, indices, stocks, and so many others. Using market analysis, you will pick an instrument which is the most suitable for you. For some traders, this may be the currency pair, the known to all of us Forex. For others, maybe a commodity and so on. Okay, so after a quick research in the market, let's say that you have decided to trade Forex, for example. Which currency pair you will trade? Euro dollar, British pound with Japanese yen, United States dollar with Canadian dollar. Again, you have many options. To decide that you've, and many other dilemmas that you fa you're facing, you, may, uh, you need to know the duration of your investment. You want a short-term trading position, a long-term or a medium-term. This depends on each trader or from the opportunity you can find in the market. For example, a trader can do both medium and long-term investments depending from the opportunities he or she finds in the market. Okay, so to sum up, 
let's say that you have decided to trade Forex, the euro dollar, euro dollar pair for a medium term position. What position you will open? Long or short? Are you going to buy the currency pair, the euro dollar in this example, or sell it? When you will enter the market and when you will exit the market? You have to apply your method of analysis to find out your entry level, your take profit level, and your stop loss level. Here, I would like to clarify that the entry level is not necessarily the current price. It can be a later price that gives you a further confirmation sign for the direction you have forecasted. For example, you may believe that if the euro dollar surpass 115, the pair will gain momentum upwards towards 120. In that way, you will place your entry level at 115 or slightly above it. Take profit is the level that you will close your position and take your profit if your investment goes well. Unfortunately, as we all know, not all of the positions are winning ones. You have to take losses and winnings. Just try to have more winnings positions at the end. <laughs> the stop loss level is the level where you will close your position and take your losses if your investment does not go well. It's important that these three levels would be set before you enter the specific trading position to minimize psychological effects. Of course, you can change your levels later if you revise your analysis, but I would advise you to do this only if you're a professional trader. If you're a beginner, it's better to keep your initial strategy following the simple rules that you have sent until you finalize your strategy as much as possible. Okay, let's go back to the subject. What is technical analysis? Technical analysis is the method of forecasting the future direction of financial assets by studying the past market data, the price, and the volume. Basically, technical analysis analysts, they study only the chart. By the way, guys, by saying financial asset, I mean any tradable security. This could be a stock, the currency pair, bonds, commodities, and many others. I will use the term financial asset or security or instrument through the webinar to keep a general tone. Okay, the technical analysis is, uh, is based on three premises. The market discounts everything, prices move in trends, and that history repeats itself. Let's take the first one. On the criticism that the technical analysts do not take into account any fundamental factors that affect the price of the security, uh, technical analysts stand by by saying that the market discounts everything. What does this mean? This means that all the fundamental and the economic factors in general that affect the market, even the market psychology, are reflected on the price of the security. Thus, just a chart with the price movement is enough to forecast the future direction of the price. Second, technical analysts believe that the prices move in trends. This means that direction of the future price is more likely to be in the same direction as the current trend that to be against it. For example, if the pair is on an arm trade, which means that it's rising, then it's more likely to continue to rise rather than decline or move sideways. The third assumption is that history repeats itself. Technical analysts, based on the market psychology, they believe that the market participants tend to react with the same way on similar market events. Thus, the patterns of the price movements will be repeated at a later, later stage. Now, what is fundamental analysis? Fundamental analysis is the other big part of the market analysis that approaches the market using fundamentals. Specifically, fundamental analysis is the method of forecasting the future direction of the security price by studying all the fundamentals, which means all the macronomic factors at anything that can affect the value of the asset. Fundamental analysts have two ways to trade. One of them is to trade the fundamental news. The other one is based on the premise that the market price of an asset does not always match the true value of the asset. 
Let's explain the second one, which is more complicated. Basically, what fundamental traders usually do is evaluating the real value of a security and the current price of the security in order to find securities that are underpriced or overpriced and take positions. If the current price of an asset in the market is below its real value, which means that it's underpriced, then you take a low position. So you buy the underpriced securities and vice versa. When you find an overpriced security, you open a short position. Okay, this sounds a little complicated, but it's easier to understand it through the next example. Just to mention that the next example is more suitable for medium to long-term investors. Let's say that I'm a financial analyst, I manage a portfolio, and I want to invest in stocks. To decide on which stock I will invest using fundamental analysis, I find out all the data I can for the stocks. This is not easy because there are thousands of stocks, but I will start by finding a healthy country and follow the cycle you can see on your screen. For the country, uh, for the country research, uh, I want to find out a healthy economy. An extreme example is that I'm not going to buy a stock, but the headquarters of the company are located in a country that is at war or is uh, in a political uncertainty even if it faces some uh, natural disasters. The details how to add up uh, to find out a healthy economy and which economy can be characterized as uh, healthy will be explained on my next webinar in November. For now, have in mind that on every step of the cycle, I reject stocks to conclude to the final one. Going forward, after that, I make a research for the sectors of the stocks. If the total sector is profitable, the future that it has, and how sustainable is the sector. I'm also looking which are the competitors of the company. After that, I keep records for the company. This is sometimes confused with the stock, but it's totally different, guys. If I speak for the company, I mean the financial statements of the company, the representatives of the company, the management views in the future, etc. In terms of financial statements, my suggestion is to look further from the company's profit. Have in mind that a high profitable company is not always powerful. The company may have borrowed a lot of money in order to show these earnings. So uh, I prefer to study all the financial statements I can uh, for the companies I'm interested in. Going on, I have finally ended up with a smaller number of stocks. I'm looking for the stock data like earnings per share, price to earnings, dividend, and similar data to this. I can use some ratios to analyze these numbers and compare the data between the stocks. Moreover, I can present, represent all these data on, charge, on charts to be easier for me to choose the perfect stock. Let's say that after my research, I found that stock A is overvalued, and stock B is undervalued. I, find, I found out uh, between the two stocks that I concluded with. In this case, I sell the stock A that is overvalued and I buy the stock B, which is undervalued. As I said before, this applies better if we speak for medium or long-term investments. For short-term trading, the fundamental analysts usually base their trades on factors that change the value of a financial asset. This is exactly what the definition of financial analysis says. Let's see how this works. As I said before, fundamental analysis is the method of forecasting the future direction of a security price by studying all the macroeconomic factors and anything that can affect the value of the security. Of course, on the bottom line, the price of an asset changes if the demand or the supply for this asset change. So, it's correct to say that the price of an asset changes on any macroeconomic factor that affect the demand and the supply. In Forex, this could be any macroeconomic event that affects the economy of a country, and in stock market, this could be any event that can affect the company. What these factors can be, 
anything. It could be, for example, a political condition. If the political conditions in a country are unstable, if, uh, for example, elections take place, traders can consider it as an isolated case of potential political instability and uncertainty, thus the country's currency would have greater volatility than usual. Another factor is the change of international trade of oil, for example. Uh, the countries that have economies based on oil exports will suffer as the currencies will do if the international trade of oil decrease. Uh, economic indicators or financial statement releases with good or bad surprises can affect the prices of the related instruments. Either these are currencies or stocks. For a stock, a new patent or a new product that related with any way with the product the company produces and sells may increase or decrease the price of the stock. Another one, uh, factor is uh, management changes. The change of the CEO of a company has also a direct impact on the stock, as I last week happened with Twitter, for example. Natural disasters in a country is a huge market affecting and not predictable incident. Of course, not all of these are scheduled and predictable, but some of them are. Scandal is another one, usual not predictable event, but even though may show some signs. For example, Volkswagen recent scandal. Okay, I'm sorry for that, guys. Okay, uh, Volkswagen recent scandal depreciated the stock more than 65%, but this didn't happen in minutes, but in days. The depreciation started in April before the scandal got known in September. Now, how we can trade these events? Let's take as first example the Forex market. At the time an important economic indicator for a country comes out, the value of its currency reflects the news immediately. So some short-term day fundamental traders trade the news. For the long-term investors, the release of an economic indicator, for example, will be a limited affecting event or a non-event at all compared to the short-term investors. The traders that trade the news announcements are called news traders. What most of them do, they attend an economic calendar, watch closely the events that are coming out and the market expectations. After the research, they conclude to their own expectations and take positions accordingly. They believe that since the financial news can have a big short-term impact on the currency, they can immediately get into trade, make a profit and get out again. But this is not as easy as it sounds. How to trade the news successfully? Firstly, indeed, you have to follow an economic calendar. Until you find the one that you will trust, you can follow two or three calendars and cross-check the scheduled events and the numbers. The broker company you have an, uh, you have an account with, it may offer its own economic calendar. Uh, so check for it. Okay, have a look what news are coming up and choose one that is suitable for you. There you have to be careful, guys. Not all of the events can be easily traded. The economic indicators that have preliminary figures releases before the final ones, for example, do not have the same impact as the other that are released once. The preliminary numbers may have been already digested in the market and the final release may do not affect the market at all. For example, in case you want to trade the GDP growth, the gross domestic product, you may prefer to trade the first flash figure as the market might be more volatile then instead of the final one. Out of that, you have to be up to date for the related news. If, for example, the Bank of England governor stated that uh, a below forecast inflation rate is still sufficient for healthy economic growth and deflation comes out low, the pound may not drop but rally upwards. Moreover, it's notable that the market usually do not react on the figures compared to the last months, but compared to what the market was expected. One other fact you need to have in mind is that you do not trade a single currency, but a pair. If, for example, you will trade the United States dollar 
with the Canadian dollar. Uh, in the non-far payrolls release, make sure that Canada does not have any other release schedule that will affect the currency. I refer, I refer to these examples, uh, non-farm payrolls um, release, uh, because very often the report coincides with the Canadian employment report. So in such cases, my suggestion is to avoid the USD cut pair, but you can trade other pairs with the United States dollar. If you, if you will predict the non-farm payrolls report, of course. Now, how to know the position you will take? You need to make your own strategy to predict the NFP number, for example. Compare your forecast to the market expectation on the calendar and take a position accordingly. However, keep in mind that many indicators like the NFP are not coming out alone. It's necessary to use your strategy to predict the unemployment rate, the wage growth, and other indicators that have significant impact on the market and coming out together uh, alongside with the non-farm payrolls. If all of your forecasts are optimistic or all of them pessimistic, then take position accordingly. Otherwise, my advice is to not trade at all for this announcement as the risk is increasing. First of all, my suggestion for a successful strategy is to choose some economic indicators and specialize on them. Each indicator is different, so it needs a different method. To create your strategy, you can use past data of, the, of that indicator, how the market reacted in similar cases, and this will also help you to find out the take profit and the stop losses levels. SEG indicator is affected from some others, include past data of the other related indicators in your method too. After you will gather all this data, you can use a statistical model, an econometric model, you can even use stochastic calculus to make your forecast based on that data. Choose the method that is most familiar to you. To do this method, you can, you can write your own algorithm or just use software that is already available in the market. For example, this could be a statistical package. Using this package or your algorithm, you could find out possible correlations and adjust your data, removing temporary fluctuations that, that caused by other random parameters. After that comes the most difficult procedure. The reason why many of us do not trade the news is the adjustment of the data and the conclusion according to your experience and other general parameters of the economy. But the most important of all is to make sure that you have tested your strategy, it works before you use it to trade. You can use your strategy to forecast a past data and check that it works. In stocks, the strategy works pretty much the same, but instead of forecasting economic indicators for the country, you can forecast releases that will affect the company. As I said before, in stocks, an event uh, that can influence immediately the price is the release of the company's financial list, uh, statements. The most, known, uh, the most known, the most common, is the quarterly earnings report. If the company fell short of the forecasted sales or profit, which means that the management overestimated the value of the company, but in reality the company worth less, according to these financial statements, the stock price will fall. So here, use your strategy to forecast the sales or the earnings of the company. Another factor is if the company, for example, just announced that job positions open and they will hire more people. This, uh, this means that the stock will rise. Here, the opposite applies too. If a company fires people, some traders may think that it's a bad sign for the company. Of course, some other will think that uh, by reducing the employees, the company will save money. As a fundamental analyst, you are updated with this data and you can forecast the future of the instrument. If you don't have the experience for that, create it. Best fundamental analyst based on the experience to create their predictions. 
However, if you're a new fundamental trader, you can make a research what happened in similar events in the past and how the market reacted. Acquisition and merging of companies are very popular and market driving events. On the announcement of an acquisition, you can make a research if the bond company is profitable, whether it's worth to be bought, if the acquirer has the budget to buy it without risking a lot, even if there is a possible cooperation between the two companies and we launch a new product. A popular acquisition in 2010 uh, is the Intel McAfee. Intel, a very popular hardware company, bought McAfee, a company known for its antivirus software. The acquisition is done in order to cooperate and produce hardware with increased software security. In this case, have in mind that the common products launched later in the first half of 2011. Therefore, a possible scenario uh, is that the financial reports didn't show profit or even they have showed decreased profit or loss in the time of the acquisition. But in the long term, this action turned in favor of Intel. Other tradable news may be the change of the CEO, management changes. Then check out who will, who will be the next CEO, why the previous left uh, the company. Okay, guys, to sum up, we have seen that we, what do we want from the market analysis? The two bases of market analysis, the fundamental analysis and the technical one, and how to trade using fundamental analysis. Guys, fundamental analysis is a unique method reliable, but to use clear fundamental analysis, you need a lot of dedication, effort, and critical thinking. From my side, I prefer to use both fundamental and technical for verification. If both methods suggest the same position, then I proceed. Thank you guys for watching this webinar. I hope this webinar fulfilled you and uh, you have enjoyed it. Please feel free to contact me by email. I'm looking forward to reading your feedback, your suggestions, and answer all of your questions. And remember, invest in yourself. Your career is the engine of your wealth. Have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you.